Well, hello there, familiar friends. Welcome back to my channel, Snips by Kelly. I'm Kelly, and tonight I'm so glad you're here because I am up to gnome good. <laughs> I had to do it. So after weeks of just being so overwhelmed with closing out a decade worth of business in the company that I love and close to my heart and just feeling stunted almost and not being able to create, I'm finally back to the scrap table and we We've got to get busy. We have to finish this adorable Gnomes for Spring series. So if you follow me, I've completed layout one and layout two of a five-part series. This was layout, I think this one was actually layout two where we did a little bit of inking in the background and we did some stenciling. We did a play on offsetting cardstock and using our white gel pen. We made some clusters with those cute little gnomes and one of those little gnomes peeking out and an adorable rainbow cricket cut. Layout number one, we used a white cricket fence, um, picket cricket fence, and we did a little play on triangles in the corner and then just some basic clustering of that standalone gnome and then some of the bits and pieces from the paper pack and sticker sheet. So we're using the Gnomes for Spring product bundle and I went over that in detail on video number one in this series. Here's what we have left in those materials in the junk gypsy tray. We have acrylic shapes, we have sticker titles, we have a few honey bunny dots, we have some Cricut pieces that I showed you in depth how to put those together as well as do all of the stamping and coloring. And I'll link that layout number one in the description, which is part one of five where I went over all the things that are in the junk gypsy tray and all the bits. So we have a few sentiments left. We have some pieces from the card making stamp and thin cut, some that I did on colored cardstock and some that I did on white cardstock and did tri-blend markering. And again, I'll link all the product in the description and I will link videos one and two in the description as well. So we're moving on in this series and I started with the blank canvas and I thought, how do I get my mojo going? I'm just not sure if I'm supposed to be moving on and creating with Stampin' Up or if I'm supposed to be finishing strong, which of course I'm going to be finishing strong with all of my amazing close to my heart things. Most of my paper crafters got the Gnomes for Spring product bundle and a little sneak here. We are going to have Gnomes for Summer to finish the fourth gnome in this series and it will be available on my shop site at Stampin' Up and I'll be talking to you more about that in the ensuing days as we wrap up close to my heart. So this video is going to focus on how to build a scrapbook layout out of a scene. So I had this scene in my head of these little gnomes and watering flowers is what I was thinking of or a little springtime day. But then when I started to build the scene, I thought, what sets this layout apart from the first two layouts? Because I love the peeking gnome, so stinking cute, but I did a peeking gnome on layout one and I did a peeking gnome on layout two. So how can I make this layout different and have just a little bit of a different style? So I love layout number one, I love layout number two, and I've been going all out with playful. I love going playful, if you're gonna go playful, go big or go home. So we have this little watering can from the Cricut and then another watering can that is from the card making stamp and thin cut that I colored with tri-blend markers. So I was envisioning the little girl gnome doing the watering of the flowers and either A, using the small watering can that I did with tri-blend markers or B, using the large watering can. Now I made some water splashes on the Cricut. Now sometimes I'll save my negative space just because I can't quite remember how they go together. I don't have that 3D vision that most people have or that ability to just put things together. So I use my negative space to remember how to make this cute, cute, cute little water splash. And I thought would be really cute is if the splash was coming out of the watering can and the little gnome was having 
the water come out, either of the little one or the big one, and then maybe it was starting to go on the other gnome's head instead of on the plants. <laughs> You're wondering about my brain. Um, and then she has to get an umbrella because the little gnome is watering her head instead of watering the plants. And then it would make this cute scene. Well, as the scene unfolded, I was like, this is enormous. You know, I am, people who follow me know I'm a cricket girl and I'm pretty well known for really large cricket cuts. I love that. Or large embellishing. It doesn't have to be cricket cuts. But even this series is a little too large for me. I would either have to do all of the photos on the lower left and the upper right on this page, um, or I would have to think of another way to incorporate it. And my goal with this layout was to use as the least um, least amount of pattern paper that I could, and the most have the most amount of photos, but still have a decorative element. So I thought, what about trying it on the circle? So I made an eight inch circle and then I made I believe it's an eight and a half let me look here it could be nine I think it's eight and then it looks to me like eight and a half and so I have limeade for the eight and a half I have white for the eight inch circle of course I made those on a crick on the cricket but you can make them however you would like to make it and I thought maybe using that center circle as a focal piece I could sort of pull together these pieces and not have them look so discombobulated and all over the place sort of pull the scene together and still create the elements of a lot of photo opportunities. It's always a trick. My paper crafters want decorative, but they want lots of photo opportunities. So you can do that with our signature close to my heart flip flaps. That's always a great go-to to give you extra photos, but there are some other tricks up my sleeve here. So I'm just envisioning her up on the top with the watering can over the top of the flowers, trying to water the flowers and watering her friend instead so her friend is hiding under there so I get that peeking element that I love again but yet it's a little different of a scene than the first two layouts with the peeking gnomes so I have a couple title options here from the sticker sheet and I do really love that lime aid sticker um, that just talks about spring I think this would be an adorable spring layout for your spring gardening spring flowers I told you earlier on my first two layouts that I'm taking um, a little trip and we're going to be touring some beautiful gardens with a friend um, and I'm kind of holding out for those and I'm also going to use my Easter photos with it. So now the trick is we've got a big scene here and how to build my pages around the scene. So I think I can do three three by threes, and I love this crisscross pattern. It has the limeade in it, it has the honey butter in it, and it has the lemonade in it, and I think it's gonna tie in really, really well with a series of photos. So I go with three and a half by nine and three quarters, and the reason I go nine and three quarters is I think that I can go flush to the right edge and just come to the edge of the white circle, and then build from there. So there I get three photo opportunities on the decorative page, on the focal page, and I'm liking that. Now, the little gnome is up kind of high, and I can leave her up there. It's kind of cute, but then I thought maybe I want a little bit more realism here, and I want a step stool or a step ladder. So I made a six inch step ladder, and I thought how cute it would be if she's just teetering and tilting on the edge of that ladder and tipping her watering can over. That gives some height. It gives a little bit of a decorative element off of the left page. It tones down a little bit of the limeade and the lemonade, um, just by bringing in the espresso color. So we have espresso, which is a color that really does go with gnomes for spring, but I think that really helps tone the color down. So now again, deciding on the lemonade cricket watering can or the little watering can, and I do go with the cricket watering can just because I want the water droplets to be enormous because I want to have that feeling of uh, the little gnome 
friend under there getting all wet and so these little gnomes have been playful they've been mischievous and those of you who have followed me we did winter gnomes we did spring gnomes or autumn gnomes uh, autumn gnomes and now spring gnomes and we're going to like I said get summer gnomes over at Stampin' Up. So I can't wait for you to check me out over at Stampin' Up. I will have a website over there and it will be active on May 1st www.snipsbykelly.stampinup.net. I hope you'll check me out. I'm going to have some little freebie uploads over there and I'm going to have a featured uh, um, a Stamp It Up kit which is a new kit that I'm creating uh, that you'll be able to see and take a peek at over there, which is a perfect marriage of both Close to My Heart and Stampin' Up. Close to My Heart um, converted Stampin' Up demonstrators have the option to use Close to My Heart with Stampin' Up until December of 2024 so that we can help our paper crafters use up everything that they've purchased and then introduce some new fun things at the same time. So I'm excited for that. So now I've decided to make that linear series go across to the next page. I could do a basic grid. I'm a go-to grid girl, but I kind of wanted something a little bit different. So I went with three and a half by 10 this time and three by three photos. And I feel like I can but that right up next to the other one and pull over that crisscross pattern paper over to the right page. Now I have to build on that and figure out how I'm gonna pull in the limeade from the left page. So I'm gonna go with a three and a half by eight times two. Now our cardstock, of course, our white card car, car, white core cardstock is double-sided. So I thought I could do a play on both light and dark. I actually flipped these around later in the video and put the light on the top and the dark on the bottom to do my shading and offset the darker limeade on the left and do a little color balancing and have the dark dark limeade on the bottom right instead of the top. Now I can do another three by four photo and another three by three photo on each of those, but I could also leave one alone and make it a journaling square. But I also have some circle stickers from the sticker sheet where I could pull in some circle elements on the right page for a little bit of balance because I have a lot of straight lines, a lot of rectangles on the right page, so I can soften up that right page by adding the circle elements. I'm doing okay on the left page because I'm offsetting with the larger circle. And then I could also pull in that umbrella piece to tie in the left and the right. So I have some single umbrellas that I did in Lemonade, Flamingo, light glacier dark great glacier and I think for color balance because we have the the flamingo gnome in the upper left we have a little bit of flamingo in the florals on the lower right of the left page and then we can bring that flamingo in with that umbrella on the way right as well I do have another um flower crate so I do have a flower box I have two flower boxes but I just think one is enough. I don't think we need an extra. I do think it would be cool to have the flowers there and pull in that floral element on the right and then do a little bit of element balancing. So we've got floral in the lower right of the left page and floral on the upper left of the right page. Oh my goodness, it sounds like a huge airplane is going over right now. <laughs> <laughs> only in the country okay so I think though there's a lot more white space on the upper portion of the right page so maybe a few little banner pieces from the sticker sheet maybe a few little word stickers might be cute somewhere I do feel like there's a lot of yellow and a lot of green I feel like maybe a tiny transition strip like maybe one eighth inch by nine and three quarters on the top of the left page and one eighth eighth inch by 10 on the right page. I feel like that helps a lot. Just, I know I don't have anything anchored down. I don't have anything down yet, but I feel like that really does help pull in some color. Now, of course, we're going to want to do some treatments, right? And I'm really thinking about the drops of water that are coming out of the watering can. And I'm thinking about making a watercolor wash out of our ink pads. So I'm going to get a spray bottle of water. There's 
there's about three different ways at least of doing this. You can press really hard into your ink pad and get some ink in the lid, spritz your lid with water and swish that around and make a watercolor wash. You can also press your ink pad down on your all-purpose mat, spritz that with water and swish that around with maybe like a watercolor brush. So you could also just use your reinkers and boy do I hate even bringing up reinkers because <laughs> with our liquidation sale it has been a frenzy just everybody buying up every ink pad and every reinker they uh, everyone loves my paper crafters love our magnetic case and our specialty felt in our ink pads and they love 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 that so you can make a water color wash or bath in any of these three ways and you can brush it on your paper and make a, some puddling you can actually tip your paper over and just make some puddles on your paper and it makes a really really cool effect and I feel like since we're dealing with water droplets with spring and with the watering can this is a perfect technique for this and why not pull in some glacier uh, shimmer brush shimmer brushes were like a buck on our liquidation sale in fact there's still a lot of them there I don't know if it was more than a buck it was a dollar something they were just dirt cheap and so those have been going like crazy and I love our shimmer brushes now you're going to want to have some baby wipes close this can be very messy but looking at this I'm just trying to decide I think I want to do a watercolor ink pad wash on the circle in just a couple small spots but I think I want it to carry over onto the stark white background to give it a little bit of you know, pizzazz in the background instead of so much, such a large amount of white space. So I'm actually going to just dip this a little bit and I'm going to get the spots that we talked about the upper right and the lower left you you can't really go wrong I mean I suppose you could if you just really blotched it all over but I'm just gently tapping that paper into the ink and I'm loving it it just gives it that nice little water splotchy look and of course it's glacier ink if I didn't say that and it's glacier shimmer brush so I'm doing a little splattering with the watercolor wash as well as as that top part up there I've squeezed out a little bit of the glittery shimmer brush and when that dries it's going to be so pretty and so perfect and now it's going to hit in just the right spot a lot of the middle will be covered up but I'll have some great blotches in the background that look like we um, the little gnome girl sloshed around with the watering can now I'm going to do the same thing on the right page so there's just a couple spots on the right page that I feel like are going to show or excuse me the left page I'm still on the left page I'm still doing the white background getting ahead of myself yes I am going to do the white right page as well but let's finish up this left page here there we go now it's going to come up on the right from the circle and down on the left from the circle. Now you can see that we can use the same technique a tiny bit in that upper left and maybe in the middle right, sort of around where the umbrella is. I think if we just carry that technique over to the right, we'll have balance with the technique. We're gonna have color balance with the colors. We're gonna have balance with the icons because we have some of the flowers on the left and some on the right. We have, um, some of the stickers on the left and some of the stickers on the right that are creating balance and color balance as well. So now, oh, this these shimmer brushes sometimes, I get them, um, I have to pull really hard. I notice the older I get, uh, pickle jars are really hard for me too. <laughs> I don't have anybody around though on the weekend during the day to pull my shimmer brush caps off though. They're not really that hard. I just was struggling on camera. So now, thank goodness for our all-purpose mat. You got a little wipe wipe your shimmer brush. I always have inky fingers, but um, if you get your tools and your mat cleaned, now we're golden, loving the background. So I have the foreground plan, I have the background done, and now we can assemble. And so now I'm just going to get placement of these pieces. And again, I know that I had a couple week laps in there. Oh my word, you all. I had, um, 
gosh, just the business and closing out parties and trying to get all of our demographic information and all of our history from 10 years and close to my heart off of our sites before our sites go away on April 30th. Closing out, like I said, closing out parties, helping people find orders, helping to find what product is still available on our liquidation, helping uh, to keep the customers apprised of, of things that they're dropping, you know, because they're still dropping clearance items um, and cleaning out the warehouse and so trying to do as much as I can also packaging happy mail and trying to get my team crossed over to Stampin' Up. I'm really really fortunate that 95 98% of my team is crossing over to Stampin' Up with me so I'm really really blessed about that and also have some new team members that are crossing over to Stampin' Up and so just doing a lot of training and ha- uh, getting so familiar with the product, playing with the product. Uh, we don't have much product that we can play with yet. We were able to order a kit from Stampin' Up um, and we were able to get some product in that. And then um, we are not allowed to order till May 1st at the same time our customers can order. So so yeah, just getting all that. And then every day walking by my beautiful journey bundle, walking by my unfinished gnomes for spring project, walking by all of the things that I still want to finish yet from the current cycle and I was so happy after this today you guys I felt like I must have been depressed and didn't know and I'm one of those people that is like never depressed. I have a happy personality. I'm like the pot is always half full. Um, But I'm also a person who works really, really hard during crisis and I don't ever break down during crisis. And then when the crisis is over is sort of when I have my little meltdown. And I think I was having my meltdown because I kept going to um, the gnomes for spring and I had so much else to do. I was so overwhelmed and I couldn't get my mojo going. And then today after creating with this cute I mean just beyond cute adorable series I'm all ready to go now what like you look out we could just have like a bomb of videos coming because I am back and I you know I have to give myself permission to grieve you know the closure of close to my heart is tough but it's also time to be happy now we've had enough grieving and it's time to move on to new and exciting things Stampin' Up! has welcomed us with open arms and there's so many cute things to choose from and they're going to have our close to my heart bridge products so if you love our close to my heart products and you want to see more of them before they go away for good you come on over on may 1st to the shop site and you're going to get a great surprise we have a brand new collection called i think it's called go for a ride or let's go for a ride a summer collection that is actually designed and created by close to my heart but it will be available on my stampin up web website sometime after May 1st. It could be as late as May 15th, but you be watching again www dot snips by kelly dot stampin up dot net be checking that out starting may 1st okay so now you can see that i wanted the color balance of the darker limeade on the left with the darker limeade on the lower right then I wanted to have it go from darker to lighter, so I had the light limeade on the top, on the right. So now I popped up the top of the stool with foam tape, and I'm going to pop the little gnome up with foam tape. I used the light side for the top of the stool of espresso and the dark side for the bottom part of the stool for espresso, but I love giving her dimension. Um, it really pops her off the page and it helps it look like a real scene. When you have some things flush, some things popped up, I think the watering can is going to be flush and I'm going to have that so that that water will trickle out over to the right. And so I'm going to adjust that so it looks like her hand is over the handle, her little tiny hand. I have have that on the top ridge it does look a tiny bit plain on the top of the watering can so I may have to zhuzh that up a little bit but I am definitely happy with that now I have these glacier bits of the water splash and they're going to kind of blend in a little the shimmer brush the glacier shimmer brush and the glacier watercolor ink pad wash um, look perfect in the background but I think I will pop the three larger pieces up 
By popping that up on the color in the back, it does help differentiate it so that it doesn't just blend in like a big, weird color blob. And so it does help that to stand out a little bit. And it's amazing what one little foam tape or a foam dot will do. So the littlest ones, I'm making those flush. The larger ones, I'm popping those up with dimension. And you're going to see here in a minute how much that really, really helps to pop that up away from that secondary color. And it really makes it come to life as a scene. So you can see the dimension that it now has with that foam tape on the back. I love building pages around a scene, but I love adding a scene to a page that I've already built. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Scrapbooking is such a personal thing. What you scrapbook, how you scrapbook, um, all of those things are personal. So if you don't particularly like a way that I do things, but you have a concept that you gain from it and you can apply it to your style, by all means, that's what you're supposed to do. Or the other way around. If you love my style, but you really want to apply it in a different way, you totally can do that as well. Everything is personal from your titles, from your subjects. There are certain things that some people would never want to scrap about. I like to scrap about serious things, about playful things. I like to put very personal things in my scrapbooking pages because they are for my loved ones. So my husband always says that scrapbooking is my love language that I'm much mushier and I sell, say more of my feelings in my scrapbooks. Other people are more generic journalers, which is great too. Again, there's no right or wrong for journaling. But I think sometimes I say the things in my scrapbook pages that are harder to say in person. And then I love it when my family reads those things. I'm able to brag about them, to say what I love about them. Not that I don't brag about them to their face, but it just... Maybe it doesn't come up as often or I brag to them to other people, brag about them to other people, but they don't get to hear it all the time. And so it's really fun for me to put that in my pages. I also have scrapbooked about my mother's death. I did scrapbook about um, COVID, which I did offend one person um, in the audience who said that they had experienced, had a really, really horrible experience during COVID, which who didn't, but um, experienced a, a harsh death in the family and that it was offensive to scrapbook and have a title about COVID or coronavirus. But that is me. And that was my personal page. And that was a page for me that I happened to decide to share in public. Public, and though I apologize because I did not want anyone to be offended by that, I can't stress enough how scrapbooking is your own art. Um, and I actually do do scrapbooking for art, for um, a way of expressing myself. I think the being the memory keeper in my family is and um, and being an artist or someone who expresses themselves through art, whether it's great art or not. Um, is my way of therapy. And so some people will only scrapbook things that are going to go in their memory books and they won't create pages if they're not going to have photos on them right away. And I love that too. But I also actually just use scrapbooking as a therapy. Creating in and of itself is super therapy therapeutic to me. And I am a firm believer that it releases endorphins in your body when you are creating not just scrapbooking, but when you have a hobby that is creative. Um, and it even could be mechanical but you're using your hands. Um, I know my husband says the same thing, that he gets a charge when he's working on equipment on the ranch and when he makes progress on things. It releases something inside of him that feels useful and productive and creative in his own way. And so I can't say that enough about making it your own. If you can take from what I do the things that you love and you want to apply, and if you can leave the things that aren't your jam, then I've done my job.
then I've done my job in encouraging you to be you and to do what works for you. So as you can see here, I'm playing. So I am clustering, I'm balancing, I'm making sure that I have a floral cluster on the left and a floral cluster on the right. I've pulled an umbrella over to the right to make sure that I have flamingo color over on the lower right, opposite of the flamingo color on the upper left. I've made sure that I have some dark lines made in the lower right to match the dark lime aid in the circle on the left and I am balancing some of the white space with a little bit of color by adding some stickers I'm doing a balance of dimension by popping up some pieces and leaving some pieces flush I have a visual triangle now I have um, I feel like I have color balance I have a visual triangle I don't really know what to do with this extra flower and I think that little watering can needs a little something something Something, and then it gives a little height over my circle and this little snail has followed my little girl gnome in each layout so far so that snail is from the gnomes for spring card making I believe it's the card making or is it the scrapbooking stamp and this is scrapbooking stamp and thin cut the card making just has words but the scrapbooking stamp and thin cut and again those came in the bundle if you got all of your product together in a bundle and I did review that in great detail in the first video in the series there are five videos in the series overall there are 10 pages in the series overall and you can follow right along with my videos and create right along Along with me I was very careful to give dimensions um, and you can do that or at the end of the five part series there will be a cheat sheet available and I will link in the description how you will get that cheat sheet in the fifth and final video and the cheat sheet has the full supply list the um, a cutting guide portion that shows you how to cut each piece of paper and cardstock and the Cricut Design Space file as well as full color photos to put it all together. And so if you want a little more help or you'd like a little more support in putting it together, you can check out that cheat sheet option. All right, so now I'm adding a few little honey bunny gems or dots to the flowers on the little gnome girl. I think that we should add some of the acrylic shapes that came with the Gnomes for Spring series and I'm getting happy. I'm getting happy. It's coming together. I'd like to add a couple little word pieces up in the upper right, a couple word stickers, maybe over on the step stool, over on the left to tie it all together, to tie in a little bit of the jade green as well and I'm getting so so happy I think it turned out adorable I'm getting my mojo back getting myself out of my funk getting excited now to move on to Stampin' Up and also to finish all of the gorgeous fun and amazing projects that I still have yet to finish from close to my heart don't worry there'll be lots of close to my heart products or projects still on this channel to come we're allowed to use up our close to my heart um um, materials all the way through December of 2024 so I'll have some of Stampin' Up! I'll have some of Close to My Heart and I'll have a perfect marriage of both of those as well. Won't you please hit the like button, share, subscribe, and tune in right here on Snips by Kelly for part five of Gnomes for Spring. Thanks so much for hanging with me. Bye-bye.